Let me get with another YouTube video. Today we're looking at the Glock 31 tutorial. This is magical part number one. So if you guys are excited just like I am, please get that way because this will be a very, very long video. Uh, today we're looking on, we are working on the internals of the weapon. By internals, I mean we have our barrel, we have our rubber band which resets our slide after we lock it back. Uh, this is the forward part of the shell ejection port, and this is the actual shell ejection port. Uh, these four studs here and then this very back piece here is important to stop the slide from going too far forward so without further ado we are going to get this built so if you guys will give me four seconds I am going to quickly break down the barrel rubber band and all these pieces into their basic form so you guys can understand how to build them and I can show you how to build them so let's get this done I hope you guys are feeling just as good as I do because I feel pretty great about today. Uh, it was actually quite a fun day at school. Got to see a bunch of new things. Got to learn a bunch of new things. Uh, didn't know a lot about chemistry until today. I didn't know a lot about algebra 2 until today either. So uh, it was actually quite a good day at school. I have loved it very, very much. And I got to hang out with some awesome friends of mine today as well. Uh, so. Let's go ahead and get the shell ejection port done first. Um, so this is basically the layouts of the pieces that you will need. Uh, now then, if you want to take a pause here to see what pieces you need, go ahead and do so. Um, and then after you guys get done looking at and collecting all the pieces you need, we're going to go ahead and begin. So you're going to take this magical 2x3x1 two by by and place it again on top of this magical 2x3x1. Two by by Perfect. You're going to take this 1x2 flat without any studs on top and you're going to put it on the back. You're going to take this 2x2 two two flat with these studs on top and place it so. Hope you guys are keeping up. You're going to take this 1x8 stud, put it here. You're going to take this other 1x8 stud and put it there. Now then, if you want to simplify this down into a simple 2x8 flat with the studs on top, go ahead and do so. Now then, you're going to take any flat piece, I don't care what, as long as it doesn't have any studs on top of it. And you're basically going to fill up the top here. It's kind of hard to do with one hand, but you know, I'll manage. So, now then, these gray pieces here, specifically these two flat plates here, that is the actual shell ejection port. This is what you're going to see whenever you pull the slide back. So don't use these grill pieces on here because it's just going to make it look ugly. So that's your first piece. Congratulations, step one is complete. You're going to put that off to the side. You're going to get yourself two of these 1x6s. You're simply going to take a 1x8 flat with no studs on top. And you will place it so that it is on this like so with two studs empty. Do the same to the other one. That is the second part done. This is the top of the shell ejection port without the slide pulled back. Important pieces. Now then I'm going to quickly break down these two pieces and show you guys how to do that. So if you'll excuse me, I'll do that. So essentially these are the pieces that you will need including a rubber band of some sort. I used a red Lego one because they're pretty efficient on this one. Um, however you might want to double it up because uh, uh, sometimes my slide doesn't completely go back like it should. Now then the barrel is essentially one, two, three, four, five, six, basically seven of the circles long with a flat piece on top. So just so you guys know, and then there is a rod stuck through it to basically keep it all together, and that is the reason as to why I did not pull this apart, because that is quite a pain in the ass to put back together. So uh, let's go ahead and start with the barrel. 
you're going to take a 2x2 two two flat with the studs on top and basically put it on top of its partner, another 2x2 two two flat with studs on top. Bam, perfect. Okay, now you're going to take this magical L bracket piece, which is a very, very unique piece. If you guys don't have one of these, you might as well stop because there is no way around using this piece. So you're going to need this, and you're going to put it on top of those two pieces, like so. Hope you guys are still following along. Then you're going to take your seven cylindrical pieces, put them together, put a end on it like so, and then you're going to put a rod down it so that it fits flush. And then you're going to put it on the end of that L bracket. So now then you have yourself a complete barrel. Now then, moving on to what holds the rubber band. This piece is very, very essential. When we put the rubber band in place, you guys will understand why it is. So I highly recommend using this piece. If you guys don't have this piece, you can make yourself one um, using three other pieces. I'm pretty sure you guys know what I mean. The uh, smaller piece that looks like this, and then simply two uh, one by one flats with the, or one by two flats with the studs on top. Now you're going to take a 2x4 flat with studs on top, place it on top of this piece like so. On top of this 2x4 flat with studs on top, you're going to put a 2x4x1 with studs on top, on top of it, so that you have an overall model that looks like this. On the front of that 2x4x1, you're going to put a 2x2 two two with or two by two flat with studs on top, like so. And then you have that, and that's complete. So now then your final setup is eventually going to look uh, like a lot like these two go up there, and then this one comes in the back right here, just like that. Um, but we're gonna uh, pretty much save that for later. Make sure you have a rubber band with you. You don't need a rubber band, but it just makes for a much better realistic feeling um, whenever you, you know, cock it, whatever you want to call it. So in the next tutorial, we're going to be working on doing our slide. So don't, uh, you know, don't forget to watch part two. Um, I hope you guys are following along with me. I know I do use a lot of technical terminology like a one by eight flat with no studs on top or one by six flat with studs on top. I know I use a lot of that technical terminology, but it is a lot easier to uh, speak in the Lego language than it is any other language. So I'll see you guys in part two. Hope you liked this video. Remember to comment, rate, and subscribe for more videos like this one. I'll see you guys later.